Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Check it, check it, check it. This is your unique host. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not none you know my dad walk on. Man, hey, man. We here, man. Houston, Texas, man. Stand up, man. We in the building, man. Hey, man. Filmed by Miyagi. Or Miyagi. It's filmed by Miyagi, but really, Deezy, that's my name. That's Deezy. my Deezy. Like, that's my, my Instagram site, Deezy Miyaki. Miyaki is an acronym for music as a culture itself. Damn. That's straight music related. You got but, it all figured out. Yeah, but this our second time. Appreciate y'all. So we personal. So Deezy is my name. Like, Deezy. Miyaki, that's music business. Yeah. Deezy, that's my street name. That's hard. You know. So no, Dizzy, no, no. did you get to talk to him? You didn't get to talk to him last time. Yes, I did. A little bit? Yeah. Not like an hour. You we moved out a little bit. I, I, I moved out the way fast. It was real fast. This nigga is not here today, so we going to get to talk yeah, today. Yeah, and for the record, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate y'all having me last time, but we wasn't even that familiar with each other, so it wasn't yeah. even like... You know, it was a feeling out type thing. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, it was yeah. like, oh, okay, so you know, over time you can sit back, analyze, and, oh, okay, this is yeah. what, okay. That's what they're about. No, we How right we back. doing then? It's so all bliss. Thank you, man. For God sure. is good, man. Mm -hmm. So just um, you definitely opened the doors for a lot of people. And I know you like you humble, like like Al D. Al D that one for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you humble. Humbly help people through your through your avenues of your your, your the videos and Basically, just uh, just basically came out came out of prison mm -hmm. and started doing this thing with this with the filming and, and ran into some remarkable people actually, mm -hmm. but only remarkable through the fact of working together with them. Right. So how how did you even ever envision doing something like that? Did I ever envision shooting videos? No. Like, yeah. it never was my passion. And it's still not my passion right now. You know what I'm saying? I just know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? But as far as being of assistance to people, yeah, yeah you know, I've always been that type of person. You know what I'm saying? I always feel like in life, you're going to be an asset or a liability. So anybody that I come across, whether it was in prison, school, the streets, whatever, it's like, I want to add something to you, be an wow. asset. So that's just generally how I am anyway. You know what I'm saying? As far as with the music, Honestly, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you put people in position and you did this and you did that. Me, I don't even do it for that. I mean, I look at it as a collaborative effort. You know what I'm saying? Correct. It take two. I'm going to do my part. Yeah. Like, I know what to do. I'm going to play my part. And I'm going to need you to do what you do. And if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, the result should gonna, work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. How... how being one that know the cameras, games, and really know how to deal with with the visuals, how is it for you sitting on the camera? Man, I'm really a camera shy. <laughs> but it, it, I'm camera shy for a certain reason. Like, a lot of people might see a lot of old videos I post on Instagram and stuff and be like, oh, you ain't shy. Nah, it's me by myself. But yeah. when somebody else got the camera, you know, I feel like, I think by me shooting so many videos, I really looked at it as like, I look at, it's a lot of, be a lot of faking going on. I don't like acting, you know what I'm saying? You know, when the camera come on, you got to, y'all know what the fuck going on. <laughs> it's like, I feel like you kind of got to get into a character, you know what I'm saying? Not really, I ain't, I don't like being no character, you know what did I'm saying? Did you like, what about your interview last, the last one we done? How did you like it when you watched the whole thing? Uh, honestly, it was cool. Like I said, I feel honest, just being totally honest, you know what I'm saying? I just appreciated being on y'all stuff because seriously, like what, I, like what I said at the beginning of the last interview, I be on the internet all day, you know what I'm saying? So... I'm humble and I'm you you a humble dude, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like you got a platform and people know what it yeah. is. So it's like one of them things like when I was in Miami, I went to drink champs before, like with Trey Truth. I was hard. with Trey went to drink champs with my son the episode. He shouted me out and everything. But I'm saying like when I met Nori, I was like, damn, like this really Nori. You know it's what I'm hard. saying? Not on no starstruck shit, but just like I'm humble to be there. Yeah. So I, I just like the experience of just being on some shit that I watch on YouTube, anyway. YouTube. like with the uh, uh, Ayatollah Piru and all yeah, that. Like, yeah, I really yeah, yeah. tapped in. And so all. for me, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I just like being on there. The actual interview itself, like I said, I don't feel like we was just really that familiar with each other. And at the end of the day, it's all about networking. And I know LD alley that situation. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, 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 yeah. And it's cool. But I'm like, we don't know each other. This man don't know me. He just, he doing a solid for one of his people. You know yeah, what I'm but saying? Yeah, but, but 
you can't turn the ARD down, first of all. But second of all, you dope as hell. Like, no, nah, no, nah, like, I appreciate yeah, it. I interview people all the time from, especially visual. I interviewed Cam God. I interviewed, uh, who else did I interview? Uh, uh, Sean Ovid Media. Mm-hmm. I interviewed Half Pine. Yeah, but I just feel like, like when you're familiar love, with I'm but, but I'm from, it makes for a better interview. Yeah, I feel like when you're yeah. familiar with the subject, you know what I'm saying? You know how to approach it. You know but, what I'm saying? Like all the way. Because last time was more, to me, introductory. It was more like an interview, getting to know each other. I don't know, man. I think Aldi took over our damn interview, to be honest with you. Yeah, he, and for he the came rain, in for and the just start just throwing. <laughs> this is what he does. He come in and just start throwing stuff everywhere. Yeah, but I'm going to take this off But now. he says that you do it. He did it. But if you really know Go him. look at the interview. But if you really know him, we ain't finna make this about him. Shout out to Aldi. <laughs> but this ain't about you. But if you know You're him, not even here and it's but, a good if, but if you know him, he's just a great debater. He loves. But that's yeah, how you know if he really mess with you, though. Yeah, he yeah. gonna come at you with that. Yeah, and if he not debating with you, he really don't. Mess but the funny thing, you. I love to hear when you talk about all the podcasts that you've been on, mm-hmm. because for us, like this is what we do, and we just know this. Mm-hmm. So when we we never people, been on them. So we've never, you know, actually been behind the scenes on mm-hmm. a lot of different people's podcasts. Mm-hmm. So when we hear all these stories about other people's podcasts, that's really good. And they say, yeah, but they do this and they do that and you know I'm like okay so some people do do it different some people right. do do the same thing some people you know it, it, it what I like about Charles though like honestly I'm seeing the elevation fast and I see myself meaning like my elevation in the film the videography world like how it happened for me you know what I'm saying like I was starting off but I never stopped doing it and I was doing it every day like with y'all signs which, which is how getting content every day Creating content I was every literally damn day. shooting videos Every day for right. like five years straight. So with that being said, it's no way but for you to go is up. You know what I'm saying? So I'm seeing like, damn, they should elevate. This is looking more professional. What's this? Is that like I'm witnessing it personally, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, damn, like. And people don't understand it because I had some um, young kids here last night. When I say young kids is because you know they're probably twenty something so forth, but I'm older. But um, and they wanted to get on a podcast, mm-hmm. and I'm like. And I say this all the time, but I guess they appreciate it more hearing it face to face. I'm like, a lot of people want to get on this show, but um, to get on this show, you got to be putting out content just as much as we are putting out content Mm -hmm. every single day. It don't make no sense for you to come on this show and just benefit from our um, viewers, but yet we can't we can't benefit from yours because you're not pushing every day. Right. And I'm like, you don't have to be producing music every single day. Mm-hmm. You just have to be um, putting up something. Then you got to be striving. You got to be doing something. Mm-hmm. Talk like they really want to uh, put this uh, work down, but mm-hmm. it's a process. You got to get, you got to get in there. You know, uh, you know that you just said five years. Man. Like right. That's not no easy win. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I just love the fact the way, you know, you stay consistent. You know if you're going to make it happen, you got to stay consistent, gotta right? Be. The consistency is important. Your consistency breeds champions, man. I want to talk about the, the young lady, Libra, mm-hmm. Jolie. Like, mm-hmm. how was it again? Like, just run me down through that because this girl is different. Like, when you hear her music, but the visuals stand out, but she working. Like, I went and looked at her, like, probably, like, a week ago, mm-hmm. I was just looking at all the videos. I'm probably looking, just, just trying to see just how her run is. I look at different people from Erica Banks, her, uh, Megan Thee Stallion. Uh, uh, I look at all the Cardi B's, um, uh, Nicki Minaj. What stands out to you about her? Okay, honestly, you know what I'm saying? So first of all, shout out to Libra Jolie. We, we, we've been at it for years and years and years. Honestly, what make her stand out she a true artist. Like, she's really talented, you know what I'm saying? I mean, at the end of the day, you know how they say six sales, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of people, a lot of up-and-coming women artists, a lot of them feeling like they got to be over-sexualized in their music because that's the way to get on. Just like a lot of young dudes feel like, oh, I got to have guns in my video and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And sex do sell, but you don't have to become a slave to it. She a true artist. She she a good balance, you know what I'm saying? She know how to turn on the sex appeal when it's time to turn it on. But even if she never spoke about that, I mean, lyrically, like she's talented. She's And she's passionate about her music. She not doing it to be cool. I feel like the problem with a lot of artists nowadays, well, a lot of people that's trying to be artists, a lot of people doing it for the wrong reasons. They don't even love music. They not passionate about music. They don't have no love for it at all. It's just... It's the cool thing to do, you know what I'm saying? Like when I was growing up, 
It was people that was in school that want to be athletes. Some people want to be rappers. Some want to be police officers. Some want, you know, different walks of life. Now it's like everybody want to be an Instagram celebrity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? She really passionate about the music. You know what I'm saying? If it was no social media, she'd still be doing music. You know what I'm saying? Okay, but but you've seen a lot. So, mm -hmm. and, and people compare, you know, compare mm -hmm. to seeing Megan, Megan Thee Stallion climb mm -hmm. versus seeing Libra Jolie. What's the... What's the significant difference or what's the thing that makes them so much alike? Uh, honestly, man, shout out to the stallion. I, I I worked with her briefly too, you know what I'm saying, before she took off when she was dealing with Carl. Like, I've, I've seen her, the difference the difference between them, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not really one for the comparisons, you know what I'm saying, honestly. I feel like a problem with black culture, honestly, is it's always a comparison. Yeah. Like somebody... I said in one of my songs before, I said, I ain't got to put a man down to uplift myself. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So if I be like, man, I fuck with Boss Talk one on one, that shit in a million dollars worth of game. I don't got to say that. I could just say I like Boss both Talk one You can like both of them. I like both. So the difference between them, Libra Jolie literally has been doing it longer. Like she's really? been doing it. Like she's been making music for a very, 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 very long time. Like she used to be like a. Uh, a hard like a rapper like like you know like diamond crime all them like look if you bug beating people up that's what her music used to be about it wasn't no type of sexual stuff it was i'm gonna beat a bitch up you know what i'm saying she been doing it you know what i'm saying you can see the story and you can hear the passion in her music that's why it's so versatile when you go look at some of her videos like if you go look at a song she got a song called day one it's a real lyrical song like about her day one somebody that died somebody that got locked up got a life sentence then she got Talk My Ish, and she got, you know, she's just a variety of music, you know what I'm saying? I feel like she's real versatile. That's the difference between her and a lot of women artists, you know what I'm saying? And she finally getting her just due. She just signed the Interscope. Shout out to her. Shout out to Barreline for pushing the deal through, and she grinding right now. Yeah, so how different is it when you're working with an artist when they sign to a major? Like, It's very different, you know what I'm saying? Um if you don't have an understanding of the game, sometimes people love to say people turn Hollywood. But a lot of people don't understand when you're dealing with these million dollar corporations and stuff like that. I mean, it's a lot of guidelines and stuff you gotta follow. You know, you might sign something that prevents you from doing really what you wanna do. You know, right now you're not signed, you can go do whatever you wanna do. Like I'm up here doing this interview. I didn't have to sign off with nobody to do this. But let's say if I was signed to a major label, it's a possibility that, hey, anything that I, any time I'm talking in front of a mic or a camera, it got to get clearance. Mm -hmm. Because now I'm representing a brand of some way bigger than me. You and know that's what I'm why, saying? That's so that's the biggest difference. And that's why art, not to cut you off, but that's why a lot of artists have to pay attention to what you sign. Because let's say if you invested in me, e, you was like, hey, I want to invest in film by Miyake. You put... $50,000 behind me, you know? I mean, next thing you know, I go off to Hollywood and Universal Studios want to sign me as some type, whatever exclusive for them. They don't know nothing about you. And I might sign something that X you out the picture and you didn't invest $50,000 in me. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So, But, but and that's kind of the way, you know, and I hate to bring Carl up again, but Carl, that's, that's kind of what he explained it to me. Like, a deal was done on top of a deal when mm -hmm. he was dealing with his situation and, you know, um, that that's something that can be done, but is it something that that it's something that happens a lot too? Well, I'm gonna tell you the truth, you know what I mean? Shout out to Carl Crawford. I know Carl Crawford yeah, like, yeah, personally, yeah. you know what I'm yeah. saying? We've done business and I can honestly say personally, all the business that we've done was good business. Good business every time. Really? Yeah. Carl Crawford, this is the thing. He taking the gamble. He took anybody that's invested in somebody. It's not just Carl Crawford. Anytime you invest in somebody, you are taking the risk. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If you, whether it could be a small risk. Let's say you just say, I want to go to this professional studio. It costs three hundred dollars. You invest your three hundred dollars into my studio time. That song might not never pop. You lost three hundred. Wow. You could have spent that three hundred taking your wife out to eat, yeah. or your kids, mm -hmm. whatever. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, when somebody take make an investment into something they're taking a the risk you know what i'm saying and so no matter how big or small what a lot of artists you know what i'm saying no no artists in particular but i'm gonna say this shout out to carl crawford because a lot of people like to bash him and say oh he only tried to get somebody ten thousand dollars in this 
ten thousand dollars. Well, show me your ten thousand since it ain't nothing. <laughs> See, this what happened with a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, lot of, lot of artists get it twisted. You will meet somebody. You meet somebody when they at the bottom, and don't have nothing. And when you don't have nothing, you real humble. Yeah. And then when you get something, you forget when you didn't have nothing. No, nah, that's real. You know what I mean? So when you think about just um, all of the, way, the, the the people that when, when, when they do get in these situations and, 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 and these big major, major labels decide to come and do whatever, a solid going to keep his real, but a, 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 he going to stay solid with the situation that he formerly was with if he was happy in it, right? That's why the music business is the music business. See, what you you talking street terminology. See, in the streets, your word means something. Yeah. You tell somebody you're going to do something, you're going to do it. I'm going to keep it this. I'm going to keep it. When you're in the music business, you're going to learn and you're going to understand that, like, it's the music business. You can think somebody going to keep it a certain way with you until the money come. Everybody humble till the money come. Money is a magnifying glass, and it's going to show you exactly what it, somebody really is. A lot of people... Can't be who they truthfully want to be because they can't afford to do it. Yeah. But when the money comes, you're going to be able to do exactly what you want to do. And that's where you're going to see somebody's true character. So, like I said, a lot of artists be in positions where they humble because they broke. And then when they get something, they forget them days. Yeah. Let's say I ain't got no car. You, say, you decide, okay, I'm going to give you this 2005 Impala. You ain't got no car, you happy. Yeah. They say, you know, you run it up. Now you in a Lamborghini. And now you saying shit like, man, you gave me that old ass and Paula, I can buy 10 of them now. <laughs> but you ain't had nothing. That's for real. Well, the, the, working with Trey, like like mm -hmm. uh, doing doing the vid visuals with him or whatnot, mm -hmm. how hard is that to work with these different artists on their vision? Especially the, and I'm talking about the seasoned ones versus the ones that are not seasoned who really, like you you have to kind of feel people out when you work with them, right? Like if this guy knows and he's been doing it a long time, you have to respect him for what he know. Or he might just say, he might be the type of person like KLC told me, KL with Master P said, when Snoop Dogg came into the studio, he had he, he was waiting on him to do his thing because he had been with Dr. Dre, but now he was over here with No Limit, and he basically was waiting on him to see what he was going to do or how he was going to rap, but he told KL, hey man, you got to tell me what you want me to do. So how is it working with a season versus working with somebody who, don't, who hadn't really been in it long? I mean, anybody that I work with, I try to just come at it from a standpoint of, like, respect what I do like I respect what you do. You know what I'm saying? That's real. It's like if you go to one of the best, your favorite restaurant or something, you're not going to really tell them how to cook the food. You know what That's I'm saying? That's real. You're going to trust that they know how to cook it already. That's why you're going to spend your That's money. That's why you pull it up. Yeah, so if you come to spend your money with me, I feel like you already kind of know what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't mind you giving me your ideas so I can try my best to bring your idea to life, you know what I'm saying? But I ain't really into micromanaging. Oh, that's you know real. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, it's, when they, when so it's real smooth pretty much most of the time, you know what I'm saying? Like when you're dealing with seasoned people, they're going to come with their idea already kind of mapped out, you know what I'm saying? But don't they come to get, they got a little something, what y'all call it when they do the video, it's something y'all call it, y'all call it something. A treatment? A treatment, uh -huh. that's it. Like, like do they, do, do, do Everybody come with a treatment? or No, a lot of people don't come with a treatment. The way video shot nowadays, you know what I'm saying, it's a lot of running, gun, freestyling. But if you are in a situation where you got a treatment, it really make it a little easier for you because all you got to do is just follow the treatment. Yeah, but but is it a case where sometimes people want to be shot with the red? You have to go rent the red or you have to, I wouldn't buy it. That, most, not me. Most, if you are up and coming artist, you probably can't even afford to rent it if you up and coming, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, but if you do have to rent it, it's cool, but I mean, the the the, end of the music business has changed so much that you can pull off that same look with way less nowadays. Really? It's the same thing I was saying when I came to Dallas yeah, the and first, did the interview yeah. with y'all. It's like back in the day when you see them drone shots on New Jack City and stuff, they had that camera on the helicopter. Now you can go to Best Buy and just buy a drone for a couple hundred. Yeah. So it, it, technology has it's changed different. and made everything more convenient. What's the furthest place you went away to shoot a video for somebody? Uh, well, I'd have been everywhere as far as in the United States, like back in Detroit. I'd be going back home. I got to get up there. New York, Man, I got to get New up York. But all over, anywhere in the United States, I probably didn't shot You going to plug me in with some people in New York? I mean, in Detroit. Uh, Detroit? Yeah, for sure. Because I'm going to go up there. I know Street Lord Rook. That's all I know. 
Yeah, but if that's the case, you need to. If you know him, you need to tell him to tap you in with Street Lord Juan. Yeah, he. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that'd be a crazy interview. Really? Not nah, for sure. See, I don't know that. Juan was one of the first people on the internet. You know, he went to the feds. You know, saying that showed a million dollars cash. Yeah, yeah. Just back in the day, though. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? like literally, he was really. Yeah, he wanted the ones. I want. I'm gonna get with you when I when I get yeah. ready to go because he already invited me. We've been talking. He'll be here next month. Mm -hmm. So he was like, man, you. Because I told him I was coming. You if I say something, I'm gonna do it. So I gotta get up there. Probably, the, probably yeah, Jay. Juan, Juan get been Juan? tapped in though, because his street lord Juan been tapped in. Like he used to be messing with short dog that was signed to uh, okay. Young Money, but they was messing around back in the day. That's hard, yeah. man. So who who would you like to? Uh, what would, what's the next move for you? You know, like I gotta ask that. Like like you, you know, two, 2023 is coming up. I pre plan a lot. Uh, you know, my next move it will be. I'm trying to get these uh, be, these uh, clips going, you know, where I get my skits going. Mm -hmm. That's my next. I, I want that to be the biggest thing I do next year. What's what, what's what's next year for you? What's big that you want to deal with? Man, like I was telling you yesterday when we was talking, I really want to transition. Yeah, serious about that. You yeah, two dope yeah, yeah. individuals, bro. I would. I nah, know. but it ain't that I'm not gonna be doing visuals no more. It's just expanding the creativity and just understanding that it's way more to do than rap. Yeah, you know, yeah, rap yeah. Shit, You know what I'm saying? Well, you said like, you didn't want to do, when I was talking about, you said you like uh, weddings, but you didn't want to do movies, or you do want to move movies? Well, not in Texas, not in no movies. Oh, uh, where you want to do movies at? No, I'm saying, like, even, like, I'm saying, like, out here, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, like, the vision ain't there for, collectively, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, to, to make it go smooth, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, if you watch, like, a lot of the Detroit movies and shit, like, I know the Moolah film, the shot, like, Plug Love, 211, and mm -hmm. all that type of shit, like, Everybody got vision and just understand it. I hear everybody wanna, you try to get a motherfucker to do a movie. It can't happen because it happens, you know what I'm saying? Right. But it's harder, you know mm. what I'm saying? Because of the vision, but my thing is, like I say, just expanding, just going into another realm with that camera. Because there's yeah. so much you can do with a camera. Yeah. You don't got to be in the motherfucking trap all day. You told me about shooting flat, nigga. I did learn that on YouTube, nigga. I shoot flat on everything. Yeah. Then I pretty much do everything in post, nigga. Yeah. I do not do, like, no color correcting before I put my stuff out, uh -huh. you know? I mean, you know, before I shoot it. Uh -huh. I, I I think that's that that's the way I learned it now. Um, but I did start off putting color in it, but I'm like, I can't take it back out. Mm -hmm. If I want to change, I can't change it. You know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. So, so d d when you first started did you go to school for it or did you just a lot of hands-on or did you watch videos youtube everything, university everything for me is straight hands-on and like she said youtube uh -huh. i really never thought about shooting a video after i came from prison literally i'm rapping and then i start shooting my own shit and just like you say youtube university <laughs> Wow, I got to ask you about, sure. about about shooting videos and, and just the danger of, that comes with a lot mm -hmm. of the hip-hop. Uh, uh, and it comes everywhere, so it ain't just mm -hmm. hip-hop, but this is the thing. Um, uh, Takeoff gets killed here in Houston. Mm -hmm. um, you out here working with different artists all the time. Conflict is in the air. Um, do you move different or do you still move the same? It has nothing to do with me. I'm going to do me. Oh, man, I feel like whatever you're doing in life, you got to be conscious and aware of wherever you at you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i'm just like that naturally you know what i'm saying as far as assessing the situation sometimes stuff avoidable if you just pay attention yeah you know what i'm saying like you can't avoid the inevitable whatever is gonna happen is gonna happen but at the same time you do got to be conscious about who you dealing with and what's going on because like you say it do be active stuff going on yeah and you just blindly Going to a location, don't know where you at, don't know the people that you finna be dealing with. Anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have lost their life. A couple of videographers lost their life at video shoots, caught a straight bullet, had nothing to do with them. That's right. So you had half pints and he got robbed at a video shoot. <laughs> he was just shooting a video. <laughs> <laughs> what about P, like PMB uh, Rock? He comes out, he says, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, I, that could never happen to me. Uh, they, and then, then you look around and it does happen. Like, uh, what do you think about like the the talk and the way that people move and 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 the, and the energy they bring when when you do a video? So you said the key word energy. A yeah. lot of people put a lot of stuff out there into the universe, and as soon as it come back to them, everybody be surprised. The power of the tongue is really real. It's real. It's really real. You know what I'm saying? Like thoughts are things. Like what you really speak. And what you really think really gonna be your reality. If you yeah. So, you know, a lot of people be, I wish a nigga would, or I don't go, or a nigga touch my chain. A nigga gonna touch your chain. But, you know what I'm saying? I, what I'm really saying is that, like, 
some stuff is unavoidable, but a lot of stuff is the energy that you putting out. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what I meant by expanding my brand. You know what I'm saying? Like at the end of the day, I've shot 1,500 videos with guns in it. Yeah. It's like, it's more than that. Do you, when you go to LA or wherever, do you check in or figure out who was, I'm just being real, I gotta ask this question. Like. I don't got no problem with that t uh, check in word. I feel like people really, <laughs> it, people understanding it's so bad that like they feel like it's something weak about that. But what I'm saying is this, like you from, what you he says out here right now, but you in Houston, you don't know yeah. nobody out here. No. So when you come out here, you want to link with people that you know. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with it. No. I'm saying this. I'm a feeling. So what I'm saying, wherever I go, obviously I ain't flying with no gun. Yeah. I'm saying if I know I'm finna go to New Orleans or some shit like that, and I got my people out there, I'm finna hit them. Yeah. At least give me a gun or something like yeah. that. What I'm saying is, ain't nothing wrong with it. And if anybody feel like something wrong with tapping in with people that you fuck with. You crazy. So it's, it's the, the wording. Thing. It's the no, wording. No, but it's the same thing. It's like when you think about when you think about Jamaica, um, I would always say if you're going to Jamaica and you're a tourist, stay in the tourist area unless you know somebody who knows somebody in certain areas. Yeah, Jamaica, then you wow. can. Yeah, then you <laughs> then, Jamaica, then you wow. definitely gotta you know check in with that person and make sure you with that person. Right. You don't even go nowhere without that person, right? Because people know that person and know that right. okay, I'm not gonna mess with this person because you know. Right, they but it's, with X, y, Z. It's, it's just the terminology. It's the they words care, people choose. Yeah. And that's why you got to be careful with the internet. That's why I don't really be on the internet like that no more. Because it's like the internet people so dumb, you say one thing, motherfucker don't even read. They just heard one thing you said, they, they going to go off with it. Oh, you, and it's like you can't beat the internet. Because when I first hit PNB, or PNB Rock had uh, got killed, mm -hmm. it was like he dropped his location and right. all kind of his girl dropped her location. They went on the live and, and it's like, damn, now nah, then you hear at the end that somebody said it, it, allegedly it was just some dudes that were sitting outside that they looking for this. You know what and I'm I saying? Feel like just, if you wasn't there, you really don't even know what happened. You don't know what's so going on. a passionate opinion about some shit that you don't know about is retarded. They so. on there doing it every day. Not for sure. That's what they You'll do. You'll lose your okay. mind getting caught up into that. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, just I'm checking on her because she looked very concerned about your work. You know. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> so I'm just, uh, man. Like I say, I, I definitely I came down here to H Town, man. I wanted to get down with you again. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the love, man. The, the pictures you sent me, man. I looked at them. I'm icy, nigga. I'm gonna post them hoes, nigga. Yeah, nigga. I come through real fresh. You, you know what I did? My cameo over there with Bubba Dub, yeah. nigga. I was fresh and doing my thing. Yeah. And I just appreciate you because you're right. Like a lot of times, because we doing this so much, we don't. Have, I don't bring behind the scene people first of all mm -hmm. and that's a mistake of mine sometimes mm -hmm. but I be just spending time with the wife so I ain't tripping on it but at the end of the day if I want it we have it you know what I mean right, right, right. but to have you come through and hook a nigga up like that and and you know I, I that's what I'm talking My about man, bro. relationships that's real you gotta learn how to value relationships you know? I definitely everything do. ain't about value money. Everything ain't about money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because there's always another dollar to get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You don't run across a lot of genuine people. So when yeah. you link with some genuine people, appreciate them, because there's way more fraud motherfuckers in the world than real people. Okay, yeah. and I got to get back to Trey, because I did bring him up, but uh -huh. just just the fact of doing the visuals with him and going down, like you said, going to drink champs or whatever, and yeah. just, just that whole movement. How did you and him even start to, you know, uh, you know, rock out like that. Oh, that was years ago through somebody that I know in the streets. Yeah. We wasn't even doing no music business together okay. at the time. You know what I'm saying? This shit. Years later, we linked up, did one thing, and just kept it going. That's hard, yep. man. Yeah. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to them videos. Al D, let's give him a shout out again because we're not doing it. We're uh -huh. not doing it. Yeah, yeah, I got to talk about the video. Uh, the, the video that uh, he showed me a behind the scene one the other day that I don't think y'all lunch yet. But just working and doing the visual with oh, you the, talk about little Kiki. Yeah, the yeah. one with little Kiki. Yeah. And the first one you did with little Kiki. Yeah. Like, like, how was the process of that? Is it easy when it's a veteran or is it. it oh, no, it's real smooth, man. It's the type of veteran. Somebody like Kiki that been in the game for over. 20, excuse me, 25 years, he pretty much let you do what you do. You know what I'm saying? Really? He trusts he the process. It. You know what I'm saying? He trusts the process. Like, wow. period. At the end of the day, he, he got enough money to deal with whoever he want to deal with. So he deal with me because he like what I do. You wow. Know what I'm That's so hard. he just let me do me for sure. That's for all. Sure. Yeah. Um, like and like I said, you one of those guys that I feel like when when I want to see a hot video down here, or if I'm talking to somebody like I did that youngster across the street from my house, I'm like, you need to go down there and get with him by me, I get man. Yeah. I say, uh, yeah. Yeah, key. Yeah, y'all leave me alone, man. Y'all <laughs> ain't tripping, bro. Is that, is that wrong? Me, I key. You want me to say key? 
Ron is on me, I give, but whatever. Key, I, y'all wrong because you don't country. But anyway, <laughs> when I tell them that, they go look it up and they be excited. Like they see the work, man. Like the drone. But I can't even, I got drones, man, but I can't even fly my drone that good. But like I think that. people need to get out of that mentality right there. Like, name chasing. Like, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate anybody that rock with my work, but a lot of people see what somebody did for somebody else and feel like it's going to work for them. Like, oh, I, it's different for everybody. It's different for everybody. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I can shoot your video, you get 10 million views. I shoot this person's video, they get 200 views. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? Whatever no, the universe got in store for you is for you. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what you say, man. The video is dope. I see the no, video no, these no. niggas is doing. Fair and much. I'm going with the nigga who been, if you get, if you did such and such, right. High Boy West, right. uh, Libra Jones, Trey. Nah, quality nah, I'm for sure. No, 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 no. Quality for sure. But what I'm saying is that, like, you might see, oh, damn, he did this shit for High Boy West. But is you grinding like hot boy? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. And I I get it. I get it. But I'm telling you, just because I got that relationship built with him, it might not hit the first time, but I know the quality I'm getting and I know the doors that he opening with different people. I'm going to get a look. That's what I'm looking for. No, I, I, can, I respect I ain't it. I tripping. appreciate it. I respect I'm getting that look. No, I respect it and appreciate it. I just got to, for the record, got to say that because a lot yeah. of people will literally come to somebody and be like, and be mad that I they want don't this. It's just like going really? to, yeah, or just going to like a barber or something. I want my hair to look like this. You ain't got that quality of mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. what I'm saying? No, I get it, man. I get it. Man, thank you so much, man. So how can people get a hold of you if they're trying to link with you to get some work done? See me in the streets. Nah, I'll fuck with you. Man. I'm, I'm a, nah, you get DZ Miyaki 5 on Instagram, and that's it. If you man. know, you know. You know what I'm saying? I really ain't. I'm, I'm, I'm expanding the brand. So, Already. Hey. I just appreciate you for looking out, man, for yep. coming through, showing us love, you mm-hmm. know, pulling up on us, man, answering the phone whenever I call you and I just admit you. Like, you just, you know, you always call me back or answer if you can. So, man, thank you so much, man. Man, appreciate the love, man. Uh, yeah, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. And we out. You did.